Hi, this is Lady Lex UK, and this is a dreams tutorial. Um, I've had some comments uh, in my tutorials that um, things are getting a little complicated. And for some of you who have no programming experience, all of it's becoming a little bit overwhelming. It's not just my tutorials, it's everyone's tutorials. People are using terminology uh, that is unfamiliar and I can understand. Um, it is quite difficult to explain programming without using programming terms. And um, when you're used to it and you think it's basic knowledge, um, you bandy it around, you use it all the time and you don't really think, hang on a minute, uh, there are some people out there who don't understand. So I'm going to try uh, to explain the very basis of the basic knowledge that you need to know about the microchips and how they work uh, in a way that doesn't use programming language and explains some of the programming language to you. Okay, <laughs> um, let's start. Right, programming in dreams. If you want to make a game, then um, you're going to have to come across one of these at some point. Um, all of the movements, all the um, counters, um, uh, if, you're, if you're collecting things and you need to know how many you've collected, that sort of thing, all of that, that happens inside microchips uh, and you can't get away from it really. So in order to make gameplay, you're going to have to learn about gadgets. Now what's a gadget? Well, here is our menu and this is our gadget menu. Let's just close that one down. Uh, when you open it up for the first time, you get all of these options. They're all color coded. Uh, the three that you're going to use the most are these three on the left hand side, the green, yellow and pink. Uh, this one is sensors and input. This one's logic and processing. And this one's movers and outputs. And inside are gadgets. Just like this. And if I open up my microchip, this creates a sort of page or a microchip, if you like, um, for you to put your gadgets onto. So you grab your gadget and you can stamp it down like that. And now that's part of your program. Right, what's a gadget? Right, now there are gadgets in your home that you're familiar with. This is one, this is a television set. Um, think of gadgets in dreams just as you would gadgets in your house they are electrical devices and they are electrical devices with very specific um, purposes so this is a television set it provides you with a television picture and sound it doesn't make a cup of tea it doesn't vacuum clean the house it doesn't take the dog for a walk it is a television set it has a television picture and sound and that's pretty much it. All the gadgets in Dreams have very specific uses and they provide specific outputs. These are outputs, a picture and sound. Over on the left hand side here, we have an input. This is a power socket. It's providing through a wire power through an electric pulse into our television set to make it work. Lots of the gadgets, if not all of the gadgets, in dreams require power. They need to be powered on in order to work. And powering things on and off are the basis of most programs. So either a gadget is working or it's not working. Either um, you're setting its outputs manually at the beginning or the uh, outputs uh, changes are being set during the game by other gadgets. And that's what makes a program. What's a tweak menu? Well, imagine that you've got a remote control and you're, uh, you're pointing at the television set. You can change the brightness. You can change the volume. You can change the channel. That is a tweak menu. It's a tweak menu for the television set. And that's all that a tweak menu is. It's just changing the outputs of our gadget. So if we have a look at a gadget, here is a gadget. This is a timeline. This is some music. I'm going to use this in our example today. This is its tweak menu. I did L1 and square. And as you can see, it's got 
various different buttons and there's a slider here. All of them contain things like sliders and buttons. And there are things that can be turned on and off like this. These are toggle switches. So this is either on or off and they light up if they're on. Uh, we need um, we're going to we're going to need that on sustain for later on. So I'm going to leave it there. Um, it's a menu bar. It's got various different pages. Some of them have got up to sort of like eight, eight or nine pages, but most of them have got three or four uh, maximum pages to, to scroll through. And these are all of our tweaks. They're basically our brightness, our contrast, our volume, our channel changes. And that's all this is, is a tweak menu for our gadget so that it changes what its outputs are. Now, you can see, as I've laid it out here with the television set, we've got inputs on the left, outputs on the right, and our tweak menus are exactly the same. So we have inputs on the left, these little white tabs that come out, and outputs on the right. So what these are for is you wire information into the gadget that would change its outputs. And you wire out of the gadget to say what those outputs are. So for example, if I was to wire something into here, it would be that it would be a pulse that would contain information on a number and it would change this playback speed. Let's say it's a sending a pulse that will change that to um, 200. And this output, if I took a wire from this, this is providing the information that the playback speed is 200. That is the information that this wire contains. It's an output telling you what this gadget is actually outputting. So let's, um, I don't know what the playback speed of it was. Let's, let's leave it at that, that'd be fine. Okay, so there is our, our gadgets, our tweak menus, inputs and outputs. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to make a microchip that will make this television work. So we can see um, the how the gates work and how power works uh, with uh, various gadgets. So here we have uh, some music that's going to represent um, the television being turned on. And um, we need something that represents the power from the wall. So I'm going to use a counter. There's our counter. And you just stamp it into your page, into your microchip. And we open up its tweak menu. And here we have um, the default counter. And this is going to act as our switch. And luckily enough, the default for the counter is exactly that. It's looking for a target value of 1 and a current count of 0. So we've got a choice of 1 or 0, basically. A switch one or zero a boolean in computer terms one or zero true or false now because this is going to represent our power socket we want this to actually be always on because there's always power coming out of the wall so we're going to move our current count over to one and as you see this is now lit up the counter full has now lit up because it is now full so this is now an on this is on this counter this now it is full and if i was to wire the counter full the tick which is found here from this gadget into something else it's going to send a pulse right now we need another counter we'll just copy this one uh, this is going to represent our switch here is a switch on the wall because this isn't just a, a, an open power socket. It's got a, a switch, an on-off switch on it. So we're going to need uh, a counter that isn't always on. We want it so it's at zero to start with, so it's off. But somehow we've got to change this uh, zero to another number. We need to wire something in to our counter. If we look at our counter input sockets, we've got increase count that's what we need to do we need to wire something into here to increase the count 
What should we use? Well, I'm going to use a grab sensor. We're actually going to um, get a grab going. So we're actually going to physically grab the switch. So here's our grab sensor. Here is its inputs. There it is outputs. Um, the outputs that it shows grabbed. That's it. So when it's grabbed, we're going to increase the count. There we go. What are we going to grab? Well, here's the input. So we're going to grab a wire from there. And we're going to attach that to our switch. There we go. So once you've grabbed the switch, it's going to turn on our counter. Right, all good. But we need both of these to be true before we turn our television on. So we need uh, it to be plugged in and switched on. So now we need a gate. And we're going to use an AND gate for this. Now a gate is basically... Um, something you wire things into and then depending on what sort of gate it is it will analyze the signals and and work out whether or not everything is 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 correct so an AND gate when you wire things into it I'm going to put one into A and one into B this is looking to see if that is true therefore full that's on and that's on it's going to look to see if both of these are on if both of these are true then its output is going to be a signal. If one of these was not true, then this will not send a signal and it will not power on our music. So there we have a little switch. Let's just try it. So no music. There we go, I've turned it on. But I can't turn it off. no good we want to be able to turn it off so a counter in this case is not the right gadget it works but only in one way so what we want now is to create a on off switch so instead of using a counter I'm going to use a different gadget I'm going to use a selector these are the sort of gadgets that you're going to use more often than other things um, so gates counters selectors are, are quite common uh, used in um, in microchips so this time when it's grabbed we're going to wire that to move to next output on this selector and we're going to output B is going to go into our AND gate so A is going to be our OFF and B is going to be our ON so when you grab that switch, it's going to move to next output. It starts off at A, moves to B, and so this will now be true when we're in B, and that will turn the music on. But if you press it again, it's going to move to the next output. There isn't another one, so it's going to go back to A. And that's going to turn it off, because now B is not true, because it's not on. So now the music will turn off. Now, the reason the music will turn off is because I've selected sustain, which is this in the middle. So if I hover over it longer, it says it plays while it has power and stops when it loses power and resumes when it has power again. So there we go. That's what that does. So now we have a switch. So we've got no music. I can turn it on. I could turn it off. I could turn it on and I can turn it off. So there we go. That's the use of an AND gate. So we've created a nice little switch here but now I'm going to break it because I'm going to show you the other gates uh, and tell you what they do and how this would be different. So let's get rid of our gate. So instead of an AND gate we're going to use an OR gate. So now we'll wire those in, the same. Now, instead of um, both of these needing to be on in order for this to work, now only one of them needs to be on. Either this one or this one. This is an OR gate. Anything that's wired into this, if any one of those is on, is true, then it's gonna send a pulse. 
that's what an OR gate does. So any one of these. So what do you think will happen when we play this game? When we put it into play mode, we're going to get music because the power is on. So there we go. That's what the OR gate is doing. Let's have a look at the other gate options. This is an XOR gate. Now this is only really useful if you've got more than two options because this it otherwise works exactly the same as an OR gate uh, because it will only activate if one of the options is uh, is working. So at the moment this is working exactly the same as the OR gate. We'll go in and the music will play. But if we had a third option, let's just make a copy of that and turn that to zero. And we'll add it in. So if we have three options, um, so if only one of these needs to be true for this to work. So at the moment, it's working because um, the power is on. But let me, look what happened when I do this. It's going all peculiar because it's not it's not designed to do that. What it's doing is it's looking to see uh, if only one of these is, is true. So as soon as I make that true, it's not going to send any power. But we've got another one down here that's always true. It's, it's, it's a, a bit of a complicated one, but that's the situation. It's looking for one of these to be true and only one of these to be true for it to work. And our final gate is a NOT gate. Now these are normally wired, these are wired into one thing at a time. And what this does is it, it looks to see if the alternative is true. So before we were looking to see if this was true before we went into our AND gate. Uh, so if I was to long, link that up to there, um, I've now got, if this is not true, then play the music. This is on, so the music will not play. Well, hang on. <laughs> she says, mm hmm. When that's not true, turn the music on. I didn't rewind it. There we go. <laughs> Rewinding is always important. Um, there we go. So, if, it, if it's not true, then it turns it on. But it's always true. Let's turn that to a zero. You see that's lit up. So now when I play, that's going to play. So that's what a NOT gate does. It looks to see if uh, if it's not true instead of if it's true. And you can put you can link them into AND gates. So you go from a NOT gate to an AND gate and then on to your uh, object. And that's what the gates do. Right, so hopefully that's um, demystified gates, inputs, outputs, power and selectors for you. Um, and um, from with that knowledge, all you need to know now is what each of the gadgets do. Um, and they all do different things. If you go to my website, www.dreamschool.go.uk, I have an encyclopedia glossary of all of the gadgets with descriptions and tutorials and an explanation of all the tweak menus. Um, I've done this uh, with uh, Quietly Wrong, who has um, very generously given up his time to uh, try and make sure that this, this information is correct. And um, if there's any inaccuracies, please let us know because we really want this to be a, a, a good resource for everyone. So if you want to know what each of the gadgets do, you can go there and uh, it should be explained to you 
as simply as we possibly can and there's also links to video tutorials that relate to those individual gadgets that if that might help you even more so there we go that's what you need to do I hope that was helpful um, and I wasn't too condescending for, for, for you all but um, there you go thank you for watching and I'll catch you in your dreams <laughs>